Hello, I'm Nick Gunn, and I am the lead 3D artist on Industries of Titan. Industries of Titan is a very cool city building sim strategy game. It's set in a sci-fi world and it takes place on Saturn's moon Titan. I do a bit of everything art related on the project, but I especially love making characters. In this video, I will walk you through how I make an advisor character. They're a major character in the game and they help to inform you a bit about how the game works and they also give you a little bit of lore info and inject a bit of character into the world. So when I start a character, based on a direction, if there is one, I'll collect a lot of reference for the face and the clothing and accessories we might see on the character. For me, a lot of reference is super important, not only so you have an idea of where you're kind of going, like a roadmap, but also just to kind of inspire you and get you in the right kind of headspace to start making something. To show off my process, we'll be looking at the creation of Ayana Oak, who is the engineering systems advisor. I usually start with a base mesh. It's a kind of really basic model that just kind of shortcuts you to the basic forms for a head. Um, it's one I made a long time ago, and this just speeds up the whole process really well. When sculpting, I'm making the face a little stylized so I can more broadly capture like facial features and emphasize them. This also means that they should carry over better to like the low poly stage. I mean, I'm not aiming for realism here. I'm just kind of trying to capture some character. I get to a stage where um, I feel like things are there. They're not really detailed and there's no like small micro details at all. It's just kind of the overall forms are there and things are looking good. And then I'll do a really kind of basic paint in just to get some colors in there to, to make sure things are kind of looking correct. Once I feel good about the face, I'll maybe continue in ZBrush, just kind of like roughing out some clothing and accessory ideas. Or I might often like bring it into VR and work in Adobe Medium. Medium is also a sculpting app like ZBrush. But it's not quite as precise for me as ZBrush, but it's really fast and sketchy to work in. Which is, of course, great for concepting and coming up with quick designs. Medium has a few really basic default brushes, but one of them is a square one. And I love to use that because it kind of matches the voxel influence technology designs that we have in the game. So you use that as like a, in a kind of Boolean workflow, which means like adding and subtracting the brush shapes. And you can really quickly create some cool kind of tech designs and, and shapes using your hands. Just using your hands and your fingers like this in VR, it makes digital 3D art feel much more expressive and personal. And it kind of matches more like physical traditional art. And that simple fact is really exciting for me to, to work in this way in VR. After lots of iteration and going through a variety of variations, one is chosen based on the right character fit and just the kind of visual appeal. Then comes the kind of low poly optimization process, which is actually really simple and fast. I reduce the polygons using Decimation Master in uh, ZBrush. I just use my eye to go to kind of like a low resolution, but retain enough details and match the resolution of characters I've already made. I often create like imperfections on like the straight edges of like tech details so that they just appear a bit more interesting or damaged and that so that the light can kind of catch them better. Once I'm happy with the low poly model in ZBrush and how it's looking, I'll export and bring that into 3D Studio Max to then do some more kind of like refined detail work, just removing unwanted vertices, optimizing the model and the mesh to kind of make sure it's solid. And then I'll do a little bit of UV unwrapping, which I, I try and keep to a bare minimum as a technical slow process. And I just mainly UV unwrap the face to save a lot of time, which I'll then bring into 3D Coat to do a bit of painting to kind of bring some life into the, the colors of the face. Next, I'll do some rigging. Um, there's not much to say here. It's like a super basic rig. I can do rigging and animation, but it's definitely not my forte. So it's just a really basic bone rig. 
and occasionally I'll do some like physics or some simulation in 3D Studio Max if it's called for. And in this case with Ayana Oak, I did some of the dangling cables. They were kind of physics driven. And then I'll export the, the character in the rig to Unreal Engine and start some lighting tests. This is one of my favorite parts. I love playing with lighting. It's a really important step in art. Lighting can make like simple or mundane things look so much more interesting and dramatic. I also tend to make some adjustments to post-processing here. These characters are like talking to you in a video transmission, so of course I have layers like a bit of, bit of digital glitchiness going on. And I'll do a few variations on the lighting and just kind of pick the best one. So back in 3D Studio Max now, it's time to get animating. So because these animations, they loop, I try to keep the movements pretty subtle and gradual. It makes the loop less obvious. I try to have a mix of the character kind of like looking at you and into the camera as they are talking to you, the player, but also they need to be kind of thinking so they glance away or they're distracted at times and in thought. So once the animation is complete and in Unreal Engine, or nearly there, I'll often add some extra animation in the background or the foreground objects just to give the, the scene some extra life. This whole thing is an incredibly rewarding process to make these characters come to life from like the initial concept to design to the model to animating. And when the amazing team at Power Up Audio adds voice to them from their amazing pool of character actors, the process is then complete and it's just so cool to see. And there's still more great characters to add and thankfully more work for me to do. And I cannot wait for you to meet the new characters too. So thanks so much for watching and for all your time. Bye.